Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Today it is cold outside, so I'm not gonna. In the winter time, I tend to just work in my shop. But it, you know, my new shop down there where the flagpole is, it's got about two feet of snow covering it, and it's really cold out. So we're not gonna be working on that for probably another month. Probably the middle of March we'll start on that. Anyway, here's a view of the outside. There you can see my foundation for my shop that I'm building and my flagpole and it's cold it's like minus nine right now in the morning down there so today what we're going to do is we're going to go back in our shop and recently we sold quite a few cutting boards in our little store especially before christmas so we're going to make some we're going to batch out some cutting boards and i'm going to show you how um how i do it start to finish and yeah we'll stock up the store with a few more board cutting boards there's my, there's my firewood pile right there and my wood chipper completely buried. I got a tarp over it though. All right, so come on into my shop. Let's get started. The first thing I do is I take, uh, I've got some wood that I bought off Amazon. And this time I decided to, instead of, I usually what I do is I'll, I'll split them up. I'll, I'll do like uh, walnut, maple, cherry, but this time I thought, you know, I'll just make them, I'll make a solid maple one, a solid walnut one, and a solid cherry one. And that seemed like a good idea. Give my, give my store a little, a couple, a little more variety in stuff to sell. And so the first thing we're going to do is I like to, I like to use these one by two steel square tubing to um, keep them flat. And I'm using tight bond glue. And a pretty generous amount. I'm not. I'm pretty sloppy with the glue, actually. But I do make sure that it's very consistent as far as spreading it around. Once I get it all spread around, put them all together and then clamp them up. Those one by two uh, calls is what they call them. That's what I use to keep them all flat. I think in the future I might make something like weld a hinge on it so I could all I have to do is use two clamps on one side and then right there I'm using uh, bar clamps three-quarter inch bar clamps try to keep it as square as possible and again this first one's going to be solid maple the next one we do is going to be all walnut Same thing, try to get consistency in the glue, spread it all out really good, and put them together. For some reason, some of these small uh, quick clamps, they've been breaking lately. I don't know if the plastic gets old after a while, or I don't know. Right here I, is the next day. Uh, I got all three boards glued up together, and I'm gonna run them through my DeWalt planer. And this takes a little while. I, I like to get them pretty smooth and um, both sides before I, before I get started on them. Once I get them all smooth, I take them over to the table saw and I use my, I clamp, I clamp it to the square and then uh, run them through the table saw. And I want them all to be pretty close to the same size because I ship them in these Pre, uh, flat rate boxes and the this size fits really well in there then I know how much the shipping is on all the time right here I cut both sides once I get them all cut I get out my calipers and I write down the dimensions starting with the maple they're both going to be pretty much the same and then I like to have all the all the measurements written down before I go over to the computer Okay, first up is going to be the, the maple cutting board. So we're going to go over here, create a new file. And our width is 11, 11.5125. And then our height is 9.8360. And like I've said before, it's really important to get these measurements really accurate. That way when you cut your, when you cut your V-carve or whatever you're working on, It'll be it'll be perfect and center. So we're going to do a standard V carve, and we're going to hit OK. So there's our there's our first cutting board. Now we're going to do batches. So the maple we have two of them to do, 
And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the rectangle for the juice catcher. And the width is going to be the same width, 11.5125. And our height is going to be 9.8360. And we'll hit Create. Now we're going to do an offset. OK, first we're going to highlight the rectangle and center it on our project. There we go. We'll close that. Now we'll go over here to the offset tool. We'll hit offset. And I like to be about a half inch in, but I think I'm going to be a little more this time. So I'm going to go 0.65 for the offset and go ahead and create and hit close. So there we have our offset right here on the inside. Now we can get rid of that outside line. So we'll hit delete on that. Now we need to put in what, what we're going to do. Now on the maple ones, I decided I'm going to put a deer in there. So I'm going to import a bitmap. And let's see, go to downloads and see if we can find our, we have a deer that we'd like to use. And it's one that I sell a lot of. Let's see. Actually, you know what? Let's do this a different way. Let's cancel this. Let's go back. I'm not going to save that. Open an existing file. See, we already have a deer in here. There it is right there, deer cutting board. So we'll go ahead and highlight that. Now what we need to do, because this deer, because the size of the, we need to check the dimensions. So we're going to go ahead and click there. Now you can see the dimensions are a little different. So we're going to put let our dim, new dimensions in, 11.5125. And 9.8360. And our thickness is 1.830. Okay, perfect. So we'll hit OK. So now we have our actual size, but we're going to need to make sure that this juice catcher is centered on our new project. So we're going to go ahead and hit center, and it did move it a little bit. We're going to go ahead and highlight our deer and center him. Okay, so the first two that I'm going to do, I'm going to do two maple cutting boards with the deer. So we'll go over to our cutting path. Now, we need to update these tool paths. So what I need to do is I need to delete these. We're going to, we're going to, update the tool path. So right there, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and do our juice catcher first, which is the fluting tool path. You see right there. And I don't like to go too much. Um, a quarter inch is plenty. So we will leave that at 0.25. Now we want to do a different bit here. We want the there's a 1404 white side right there. And that's going to give us a nice little groove. So we'll go ahead and select. And we're going to leave all this the same. But we're going to put our tool down here. So 1404. And we'll go ahead and calculate. And preview. And there it is. Little juice catcher. Actually, a quarter inch. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, we'll close that. Go back to the 2D, highlight the deer, and we're going to do our V carve. And this time we are going to use a different bit also. We're going to use a, a 1505, I believe. Let's look down here. No, 1502. And it's a 90 degree bit. And we're going to select that. We'll go ahead, go ahead and put the bit down here, 1502, and hit Calculate. Now I want to rename these because I'm going to be doing all these at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and um, rename this. So in front of this, I'm going to put Maple. And same thing with the V-carve part. Let's put maple in front of that too. Okay, now we, we're going to go ahead and close that. And we will save this to the disk. USB and hit save. Okay, so this is on there. So we don't need to save this anymore. 
Now the next one, so let's exit out of there. We don't need to save our changes. Okay, next up we're going to do the walnut and we're going to use an existing uh, program, which is the Pamplemousse Grill. This I have to ship out two of these, so I need to make two walnut ones. Now we'll, we'll start with the dimensions and the width for the walnut is 11 point 5125 and the height is 9.6940. Our thickness is 1.8340. We'll go ahead and hit OK. Now we need to change this uh, size to fit on here. So actually, I'm going to get rid of those tool paths. Uh, they're both using V carbon fluting, so we can redo those. Now we'll go back to the drawing board. Now, the first thing I need to do is put this in the center. So I'm going to highlight both of these. We can go ahead and group these together, actually. That way, I, it's just one V carb. So, right off the bat, I'm going to highlight these, click on them, and let's get them down to the right size. We're going to center that using our centering tool. Now, it still looks a little big, still. So, we're going to go ahead and highlight it again and reduce it down just a little bit. I don't know why there's two there. Now we're going to highlight that and we're going to center it and see if that's just, that is a good size. I like that. Okay, so we're good there. Let's close that. Let's do our rectangle fluting path. Uh, 11.5125 and 9.640. That's all good. Create, close. We're going to highlight that and then center it just like we did before. Close that. We're going to offset. We're going to do the same offset, 0.65, and there's our juice catcher. Then we'll delete that outside one, and we're ready to go. So the two things we got to do is first up, we'll do the V carve. V carve 1502, all that stays the same. Obviously, down here, we'll put walnut, and we'll put our bit number 1502, and calculate. And then next up, we're going to do the juice catcher. So we'll go ahead and highlight that and we'll do, it's a fluting tool path, so we'll hit that. We're going to go ahead and write walnut on here and the bit, 14, or no, let's see, fluting tool path needs to be a 1404. So we got to go back in here, 1404 right there. Okay, let's calculate that. Now we'll preview all and there's our Pamplemousse grill. So I've got two of these to ship out, so let's go ahead and close that. Highlight both tool paths and dimensions are all good and we'll save it over to our USB. So you can see right here we got deer cutting board, maple, and now we're going to put in the Pamplemousse one, walnut. Okay, we have one more set to do, which is the cherry. So let's, let's go ahead and exit out of here. We don't need to save it. I'll go ahead and save it though. Um, so we're going to go ahead and let's see what we need here. There's a couple of the ones that I sold recently were the turtles. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and make two more turtles. So let's look in our files here. People like these bear cutting boards too. The deer and the bear are really good ones also. Now where is the turtle? We might have to import it again. Okay, cancel that. We're going to create a new file. And the cherry is 11.5125. 9.8879 and then 1.850 and this is our cherry so let's go ahead and hit OK now this time we're going to have to import this bitmap and we'll go over here to downloads and we'll have to go in here and find our turtle where is our turtle oh there it is right there Polynesian turtle okay let's import him now what we have to do to this one is we have to go over here and tran um, to this little bird up here and go ahead and trace bitmap and then we're just going to do it black and white preview apply and then we'll close that then we'll go in here and delete the picture and we're gonna we're gonna have to uh, ungroup objects then we're gonna have to get rid of the stuff we don't want so we'll get rid of this down here and I believe this drawing is actually in really good shape so we're gonna leave it all like it is now what we need to do we got our size but we need that to be bigger so we're going to go ahead and group it back together, highlight it, and then make it as big as we want. I like that size. So we're going to go to our centering tool, center it, center it on the object, and close. 
Next thing we need to do is do another rectangle for the juice catcher. And let's check our size, 11.5125 by 9.879. So we need to change this down here to 879. Hit create, close, same thing, highlight, center it on our object, and close. Then we go to over here to the offset tool, 0.65 offset, there's our juice catcher. Now we, we can, um, delete this outside one, go over to the tool pass, and we're going to do the same tool pass. So we'll do the, the V car first, 1502, all that can stay the same. Now we're going to go down here and write cherry and 1502. Go ahead and calculate that. Then we'll go over here to 2D, highlight the juice catcher, close. It's a fluting tool path, 1404, quarter inch deep. Go ahead and write this in here, cherry and 1404 the bit calculate it we'll go ahead and preview this one the turtle really is one of it comes out really nice i've done a few of these and uh people really like these okay that's it for the for all three so we got maple walnut and cherry all different let's go ahead and close this we'll save this to our to our um usb go ahead and hit save usb save now Let's go check, make sure they're all on there. So, yeah, so up here we have deer cutting board, maple, two of them. Basically a fluting toolpath and a V-carve. We've got the turtle, the turtle one, cherry, V-carve fluting. And then we got the Pamplemo's Grill, walnut, V-carve and fluting. Okay, we'll go ahead and eject this. And I will see you over at the machine. First up, we're going to do our maple. And I need to go through the sequence. Right there, I'm homing the machine. I'm going to start off using a, a 1404 bit from Whiteside. Now this is a brand new bit and I'm only doing a quarter inch deep pass and this thing broke after about six inches on this maple. Um, and that was kind of a bummer. Now I did, I did make a mistake here. I usually XYZ with a straight bit. This time I XYZ with the 1404 bit and I realized it was a quarter inch off. Right there was the second one, and, and that was after I, right there it broke. See, it broke like after eight inches, and uh, that was a bummer. And that kind of stuff does happen. I don't know, what, you know, these are quarter inch shaft um, bits right there. After, after it breaks, I just shove it all the way up in there and then, and then uh, re-Z it, and then I can basically, um, run it again. I don't know what's uh, why those shafts break so easy. I get the I get both the juice catchers done in the this is going to be the deer. I'm only doing juice catchers on on this one on the maple. The other two I decided not to have a juice catcher and see how how they look. Right here it's cutting out the deer and I'm using the 1502 bit from Whiteside. And this is 8 times speed. That deer logo that I that I have really it has really good detail in it. The face looks really cool. I saw a lot of those deer ones, so I actually only have one left. So I need I needed to kind of restock the store. Right here, I'm doing a solid walnut Pamplemousse Grill. Now the Pamplemousse Grill restaurant is in Solana Beach in California, and yeah, my friend Jeffrey owns that restaurant, and people have been asking for that cutting board. Right here, I'm doing a solid maple, or no, cherry, solid cherry, and I'm doing a like a Tahitian style turtle. And the detail in the turtle is pretty amazing, actually. Very nice detail. Those, those I thought, turned out really well. And th again, this is eight times speed using a white side 1502 bit. After I get them all done, I kind of... I kind of jumped the gun. I really, sh I really shouldn't have routed them yet, but I routed all of them. And yeah, because these are epoxy inlays, I have to actually, um, after I pour the epoxy, I have to run them through my planer. So really, I should have routed them after the planer. But oh well, you're always learning. But yeah, we're batching out six of these cutting boards. Um, one of the Pamplemousse ones I already have to send out. And then I'm going to put the other Pamplemousse one in my store. And also the turtle ones, I, I'm out of the turtle ones too. 
I think I have one left in the store. But anyway, this is just to stock up the store and show you how I make these cutting boards. Right here, I'm getting ready to do the epoxy work. Now, originally, I was going to do uh, blue turtles, blue pamplemousse, and then a green deer. But And right here, I'm taping around the epoxy. Now, this seems to be... I, I didn't do I didn't used to do this but I started I did, did this today and this helps to keep the epoxy from running off of the running off of the board like if it's not perfectly level sometimes it'll run a little bit one way or the other and this helped actually I think I'll I will do this again once I get all the tape done it was time to mix the epoxy now I'm using a uh, I'm going to use a mica powder this time and I'm going to use Okinawa blue from eye candy and I'll show you a little picture of it here. Now I decided to do to just do six ounces um, which was one to one so 12 total ounces and I had the idea of putting in this gold metal flake into the um, into the eye candy aqua or no Okinawa blue so I'm gonna put some Okinawa blue in here and then I'm gonna add the, the I looked at it and I, I thought should I put this gold blue metal flake? But then I thought, you know, if I put the, I thought the gold would look a lot better. So I ended up do, using the gold. And it didn't really show up in, you couldn't really see it very good, but it did show up in the turtles. I think the turtles were a little shallower. And it, it did show up in those, and they turned out really nice. That's the, the turtles were the cherry, the cherry ones. Right there, I add a little more gold. This, this, uh, is tabletop epoxy and it takes it takes 24 hours to cure so you pretty much have to make sure your room temperature is 70 and just let it sit overnight now originally I like I said I was going to do the deer green but it turned out that I mixed too much of the blue epoxy so I just did them all blue no sense wasting epoxy and I actually was the deer looked looked good with the blue too so right here I get my torch ready and start with the deepest one which was the pamplemousse logo I thought the solid I thought the solid walnut one actually I liked that one probably the best. Although the turtles um the turtles without the juice catcher with the solid cherry, I thought they looked really good too. It's it's very hard to judge how much epoxy you need on these this type of stuff. You you know, right here I I mixed uh twelve only twelve ounces for all six of these cutting boards and I ended up having I'd say three ounces left over probably. The detail in the turtle is really amazing. I mean, even the photographs that I took of it and the video I took of it, it doesn't do it justice. When you see them up close, it, it, it's really a pretty amazing detail. At this point, I realized that I had too much, so I just do the deer and the blue. Up where I'm at in the mountains, these, the deer and the bear sell. People like those. I also sold a rooster recently, which I, I think I still have one left in the store, but those are really nice too, the roosters. Right there I get them all filled up and then I torch out all the air bubbles with torch. Usually you have to torch them a couple times. The next day I run them all through the planer and I start off using the rough setting on the DeWalt planer just to get the top layer off and then I, I put it on um, the finishing smoothing layer and then run them through like that. And it kind of takes, you know, if, if you have to sand epoxy it takes a lot longer but if you run them through the planer it seems to seems to work pretty good. Next up I set up my sander and I got my dust collection on the sander and I start sanding all these. I start off pretty heavy. Uh, I'm using some 100 grit right here to, in the beginning and then I go and that I'm using some 100 grit in the beginning and then I go to 200 grit, 300 grit and I think I stopped at 300 grit. Right here after I get them all sanded I'm putting on these little rubber bump stops on the bottoms and um, yeah, I like these little rubber bump stops. They, you can't even see them when you're when it's laying on the counter, and they, um, I think they they're nice. Keeps it from scratching. And I'm using about a 20 year old uh, Milwaukee cordless drill, and it always surprises me that that thing is still going after all this time. It's funny people do tool reviews on new tools, but really, I mean, the review should be after after having it for a long time. Once I get all the bump stops on. I, I lay down a little paper towels and I'm getting ready to oil these up. Now I'm using a, um, a mixture of mineral oil, vitamin D, and coconut oil. And there's the first one, the deer. Actually I did two deers. 
You can really see, I mean, it, the picture doesn't do it justice, but the deers look really good. The pamplemousse, the, the walnut pamplemousse one really looked good too. Yeah, actually, I'm pretty happy with that one. And then, like I said, the detail on the turtle, I don't know if you could see it, but it, it really, the detail was really cool. Actually, I just shipped one of those turtles to Hawaii. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like the video, ring the bell. There's the detail of the deer, the head. You can really see, here's a pamplemousse. Pamplemousse grill. And then there's the turtle. You can see the gold flake in the turtle. It really came out good. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time. Later.